It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Jane Pauley. E.T. phone home. Childhood has often been a theme of Steven Spielberg's movies, including 1982's E.T. But in his new film, the boyhood story Spielberg tells is his own. Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes talks with a Hollywood legend. Every one of my movies is a personal movie. I don't make films that I don't consider to have something of myself left behind in them. Steven Spielberg has left something of himself behind in 35 movies. Though in some cases you have to wonder what. Along the way, he's become the highest grossing film director of all time. Reggie, wave in the camera. Now, at age 75, Spielberg has made The Fablemans, a film he calls semi-autobiographical. My mom was really kind of pushy about, Steve, what are you gonna tell our story? What are you gonna tell my story? She and did. so absolutely, they, 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 this is something that they embraced. I kind of assumed mm -hmm. that um, you were waiting, <laughs> a little crass, but waiting f for your parents to die because you wouldn't want their critique or you wouldn't want to hurt them or disappoint them. But that, no, that... I, w I wouldn't have done anything to hurt or disappoint my parents. To me, it was more of a gift to them than any kind of a criticism about how my life and my sister's lives wasn't as hunky-dory as people assume. How, how much did you spend to rent this camera? 20 bucks. But I use my own money. You don't in the film, his father, as in real life, is a computer engineer played by Paul Dano. Sammy, a hundred dollars for a hobby? It's not a hobby, Dad. Michelle Williams is his mom, a free spirit who he has described as Peter Pan. It's a coming-of-age movie, a coming of Spielberg's obsession with making movies. Movies are dreams, Doc, but you never forget. Starting with the first film he ever saw at age six. In the movie, you see the greatest show on earth, and you get a thunderbolt when you see this movie. Is that what happened? Is that? the beginning, the moment. I didn't know what a movie was, and when my dad and my mom took me to the movie in a theater, it was a movie about the circus. After a while, I got very involved in the story. There's a train crash in the middle of the movie. And all I remember is, it was the scariest thing I'd ever experienced in my entire life. To overcome that fear, he kept recreating the crash with his electric trains, then filming it with his dad's eight millimeter camera. And that was it. Spielberg, the filmmaker, was born. As in real life, he was just an adolescent when he made a Western called Gun Smog. And then I showed it to the Boy Scouts on one of our weekend meetings, and they went crazy. That was the first moment where I said, what a jolt. That's a really good feeling. That was a really good feeling. <laughs> Is it true that when you did reshoot some of the movies you made when you were a kid, yeah. that you changed the angles to make it look better? I really, really tried, Leslie, my best to make the eight middle movies I was recreating look as amateurish as the films I made as a 12, 13, 14, 15 year old. Mm -hmm. But if I found a good angle, I had to get down to the ground and get a low angle that I wouldn't have done as a kid. I couldn't help myself. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I love it. Well, you realize that uh, in my business, we, that's a no-no. We could not do that. Luckily in my business, we get to suspend disbelief. <laughs> hand, left hand, slowly, left. Tony Kushner, who wrote this movie, said that he thought this was therapeutic for you. Well, it was cathartic for me, certainly. I never took it for granted. I mean, it was a tremendous privilege to, it's like making a movie, 
you know, and realizing with this movie, what have I just done? Has this been $40 million of therapy? Whoever spends, for, whoever the spends $40 million of therapy. His mother is the heart of the story, as she was in real life. My mom always wanted more. She was the more mom. Enough wasn't enough for mom. You know, is and that good or bad that's for a good. kid? That's a wonderful thing for a oh, kid oh, okay. because she inspired me to be, in a way, ambitious and greedy about more and more and more. No guilt? She didn't infuse that in you? She didn't believe in guilt. My mother used to always say, Steve, guilt is a wasted emotion. Wow. How lucky are you to be not infused with the idea of guilt and to be Jewish at mm -hmm. the same time? Mm -hmm. Wow. Now that's unique. Well, my mom liked breaking stereotypes. We're never not going to know each other, Sammy. I don't know if you give your father the credit he deserves, at least in your career. Well, you know, saying my dad was very practical. He wanted me in school to major in English, so if I didn't become a filmmaker, I would become a teacher. Being a movie director is just something that, what, one in a million people get to be a movie director? He was simply trying to protect me. His parents split up when Stephen was 19. Left out of the movie was all the real life drama when he blamed his dad for the divorce and barely talked to him for 15 years, which I asked his parents about in 2012 for 60 Minutes. I'm gonna show you a clip from our 60 Minutes piece. She fell in love with another guy. Yes, with one of his friends. You fell in love with one of his friends. Did and Stephen know that? No, he didn't know that right away. He thought I divorced her. So wait a minute. You fell in love with his friend. You left him, but Stephen blamed you, That's thought right. you had left her, and yeah. you didn't tell him? That's right. Not for years. Why? I don't know. I think I was just protecting her because I was in love with her. Even though she left you, you were still in love with her? Yeah. Still do. He forgave me, I think. I was so unhappy. He covered for me. Mm. When the, my mom and my dad announced that they were separating, as is portrayed in The Fablemans, my dad fell on the sword, but I didn't know there was a sword to fall on. I simply took him at his word when he said, it's my idea that we separate. Wow. And I live with that, and I blame my dad for that for years. The movie reveals a secret about this that Stephen kept till now, that when he was a teenager, he discovered his mother's affair with his dad's best friend. 16. Yep. And that was a secret that we shared for most of our lives. Your father did not know for most of his life that you knew. No. I never had that conversation with my dad. But that's a burden on a young kid. That's a burden on you. Yeah. That she let you carry. It's not that she let me carry it. It's something that I felt I could bury. And in a way, making this movie made me realize that I had been carrying that burden all these years and I had to exorcise it mm -hmm. from my own heart and soul. And once that was out of my system, I was able to regret that I hadn't shared that with my dad. Well, this is, those are your sisters? Yeah, these are my sisters. Let me and get this down to show you. His mom, Leah, and her second husband went on to open a restaurant in Los Angeles where she held court. We used to call this my mom's stage because the, 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 the patrons, the customers were her audience and she was performing for them all the time. Later in their lives, Leah and his dad, Arnold, reconciled. You could afford to be a little encouraged. About what? About him making movies again. Well, I didn't say that. Didn't but in the movie, The Fablemans, there's no happy ending for his parents. There is, though, a happy beginning to Spielberg's career as a filmmaker. I've got better perspective now about what happened a long time ago, so that's why this is something that had to wait for me to, I guess, grow up in order to look back.